I think if I were to rank the the professional athletes that I know where I don't know what their second best sport is, I think it's you. I have no idea what your second what is your second best sport. <laughs> no, you've got nothing for me. Um, Not one thing. Esports. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode number 176 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media, and it's been a while since we've talked to one of our co-hosts. Hello, Lucas Giolito of your Chicago White Sox. You are looking quite studious. Are you cramming for an exam or something? Yeah, exactly. The exam of uh, <clears throat> sitting in front of my computer to talk to you and then play video games after. Oh, sorry. What am I taking you away from? What 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 game is in the on deck circle? Oh my god, I have a new addiction. What is it? Valorant. What is that? Help me out. I want you to describe what you think that game's about based on just the name. You said Valorant? Valorant. V A L O R A N T. Sounds medieval. Okay. Uh sounds like we are storming some castles. Okay. And um Am I close? No. Oh, shit. <laughs> what it's uh it's a tactical shooter similar to Counter Strike. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Oh it's uh, talked about playing Valorant as well. Okay. It's, sorry. I mean it's not like I don't listen to you guys. It's just I'm not a gamer. I don't have anything wait, against Brault? it. I just Brault plays Valorant? Yeah, you guys should hook up. Did he say what rank he is? Rob, did he say what rank he <laughs> yeah, is? Yeah, Rob, did he say what rank he is? No, I don't remember that. It was it was about a year ago. I just remember him talking about it and saying he was getting killed by a bunch of kids. Oh, oh, oh that yeah. I do remember. Happens all yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah, there's some, there's some. I've had some rough lobbies. There's some sad people on there sometimes. They just, <laughs> they just want to put, they, they just want to put everyone down. Do any of them know what you do for a living? No. The, like the people I play with, my friends, yes. Yeah. But right. um no, I actually uh the other night I did I actually did do something a little funny. I pl I was playing, I was in a it's five v five, right? So I was playing with just one buddy and then we had three random teammates. And one of the random teammates was nasty, like carrying the whole team. He was unbelievable. And I don't know how we got on the topic, but we were like talking about work, like within playing the game. And I was like, you guys will never guess what I do for a living. And they didn't. And then I kind of hinted at like what I do for a living. And um, I was able to convince the really good player to start giving me lessons. Oh. So, so now he's like teaching me how to play this certain character I enjoy playing that I'm really bad at. And uh, hopefully he can take me to the next level. All right. So is this like a bartering system? Do do you have to then give him pitching lessons or how's this working? Uh, he did say he plays baseball. So I don't, I, maybe. Yeah. That would, that would be an equal trade off because he say he's got like thousands of hours in the game. And so he's got a lot to teach me. Okay. Is he 15? Uh, I believe he's 19. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what he said <laughs> oh i love this this is a, this is, it is a great world isn't it to just get lost in yeah yeah it's it's good to get away from real life sometimes okay good well i don't want to take up too much of your time i want to get you back to shoot him up sort of stuff but um <laughs> we're actually taping this very late on the East Coast, so producer Rob is is way up past his bedtime. Uh, you mentioned to me you were having some sort of issues at the DMV. Please tell me you're one not one of those guys who just walked in without an appointment to try and do something at the DMV. Because if so, I'm going to come over and smack you in your head. No, I actually did not go to the DMV. I went to AAA um, because there oh, are certain services. Worse. No, that's better. There are services that can be done, like DMV type services that can be done at AAA offices, and it's like way less people, you know, way less like of that bureaucratic bureaucratic nonsense, and you can kind of just like get 
in there. This is what I need. You wait for like five minutes, then you see somebody. And that's exactly what happened. But my paperwork was incorrect. So then I had to like drive around. I had to go to Torrance um, and go to this office where this woman, shout out Joyce, um, at the like quick VIN verification place in Torrance. She helped in filling out the paperwork, but I am a little bit nervous about the paperwork because of some other stuff we don't need to get into. Um, but I'm just trying to, I got a new car. I'm waiting for it to, it's going to be like delivered in like February or something. And I just want to be able to have all the paperwork in order so that I can sell my old car once I get the new one or trade it in. And that's, that, that's just what I'm going through. First world problems, it's fine. Yeah, it is a real first world problems. That's okay. Uh, I'm going to try and guess what the new car is. Should we play this game? Sure. It worked really well with Valorant, okay. so. Yeah. <laughs> Jerk. That was funny, though. Okay, uh, since you're six six, we're we're probably um, we're probably a fairly large car. Yeah, we're not going like mini hybrid. Um, so, uh, God, you don't seem like an Escalade guy, but I might go Escalade. No, not quite. So I'll let you guess again, and I'll give you a little hint. My last car was a Lincoln Aviator. Oh, it was it right. was, a, it was like nice. a luxury SUV, and I wanted to go a different direction. Oh, so you're just going sedan on me? No, 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 okay. no, no. It's still an SUV. Oh. I just wanted. To, I had a luxury SUV. I'm trying to go a different direction. So, what do you think? You didn't get like a Tesla SUV, did you? No, no, no. <laughs> Which people can see his face right now. In the audio only portion of this program. Um, <laughs> so bad with cars. Did you do like a Mercedes SUV? Did you do like a same G country? Wagon? Same country. Same country, different brand. So it's a BMW? Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Yeah. I got a BMW X5M competition. I want to go fast. <laughs> I yeah, want to go fast. I can see this. Are we, so we're going to have it in time for spring training. You're going to be traveling all over the greater Phoenix area with it. Not, not too much of the greater Phoenix area. I'm going to be very much located in West Phoenix. Uh, I do not, you, you know, we're in Camelback, which is like way out the furthest mm -hmm. West facility. Um, I'm not great in the morning. And I know that in spring training time, you got to get there early. You got to get your work in. So I always like to like rent a house or apartment or whatever very close by so that I don't have to deal with that traffic or that long drive. Like if you stay in like Scottsdale, it's like 40 minutes away. Yeah. And then uh, once the day is done, whether you play in the game or you head home early, instead of sitting in traffic for an hour, getting back to your house in Scottsdale, I just shoot straight 10 minutes right to where I'm living. Um, You know, not as much like, activities and like cool stuff to do in that area but i'm pretty focused on just the baseball side anyways and i just relax in my downtime think how much more valiant you're gonna get in because of this new car that valorant. goes fast valorant right <laughs> that too um you're like god what a moron this guy is uh but think of how much more you're gonna get in this is gonna be wonderful new car you know Short little commute from the Glendale area. This is going to be fantastic. I love I, it. Who's I am responsible? Excited. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I said I am excited about the new car. Yeah. Okay, good. I am. Good. The, yeah, the, aviator, the aviator was wonderful to me for about three years, but uh, I just wanted to change it up a little bit. Time to go. All right, more of the show coming your way, but first some breaking news into the Rose Rotation newsroom. Manscaped now sells beard products. I am so psyched. That's right. They are once again revolutionizing men's grooming with the brand new 
Beard Hedger Pro Kit. So now you can finally use Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using the code ROSE for 20% off and free shipping. It's got a cordless trimmer, rotary wheel, gives you 20 hair cutting lengths, all with one guard. So that means no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons and extra hair all over the place, okay? It's also waterproof. So that means you can shave in the shower and avoid all the hair in the sink. That's what I'm talking about because it gets so messy around there. And my wife, Michelle, goes, really? You had to do that there? Instead, I could bring it into the shower, and it's big time. The titanium-coated T-blade, it's tough on hair, but smooth on your face, leading to a single-stroke efficiency. On top of that, they got the Beard Shampoo and Conditioner, specifically designed to moisturize, reduce ingrown hairs, replace natural oils, and promote beard health. We got Manscaped's Beard Oil. It relieves dryness both on the beard and the skin beneath, and cap off that kit with the beard balm that shapes, styles, moisturizes, and tames for a sculpted look. The Pro Beard Kit also comes with three free gifts a beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. So go get 20% off and free shipping. The code is ROSE at manscaped.com. That is 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Code word ROSE. Manscaped Beard Hedge. One stroke, one guard, 20 lengths. Go get it now. Who hell, like, is it your responsibility to get an apartment? Does the team give you, like, here's a list of places in case you, I've never known this. Yeah, there's a lot of options. Um, yeah, the, so our traveling secretary, uh, Eddie, he will send out an email that has like different options. Like, hey, if you want to stay in the, the team hotel, I think there's like two or three options and there's the pricing for that. Or um, here's some like realtors you can contact. Um, a lot of guys will just go their own route and like have relationships with realtors from over time um, or go through their agency uh, you know, the concierge service at the agency sometimes will have relationships with realtors or Airbnbs or whatever. And then there's a lot of ways you can find housing. The CAA hook. Yeah. 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 Shout out. Yeah. Shout out Sean Twitty. at CAA. You know, I got to tell you the, uh, the baseball side of CAA is very different than the, uh, television side of CAA, which some of us are a part of. So just want to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. I'm just going to throw this out there. Perhaps it has to deal with the amount of money the client brings into the company as well. Because I did see the arbitration number you settled on. That is not exactly where I settled in with my John Boy number. They weren't the same. I'm surprised to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Bring a lot but of there value, are some people Chris. Who, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying like hell, man. I really, really am. Uh, it was nice you didn't have to go to arbitration. Uh, how much did that weigh on your mind before that whole thing was settled? Does that sort of stuff bother you? Or do you, do you just kind of say, all right, whatever it is, it is? Yeah. So, you know, this. I'd say that this go-around was of my three arb years, the easiest, the quickest. And honestly, part of that was because I had a very down year last year. You know, there's not much, there's not much you can do. I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh yeah, like I deserve, you know, this much more when I'm coming off like a four nine. So, um, you know, Ryan, my agent, Evan, um, who does, uh, contracts are, they did a great job, the, you know, discussing everything with the team and boom, boom, boom. No issues. Okay. It's nice to hear. Yeah. Nice to hear. Yeah. Um, so it, it's been a while since we have chatted. Since then, I saw... Did you go to the Dominican? Is that where you went? Yeah. Yeah, we haven't talked since I've been out there. No. It oh, yeah. It looked like an amazing trip because it looked like you were doing some really, really amazing work. Was it trash cleanup? Is that what we were focused on? Yeah, it's very, very much centered around the plastics crisis um, all around the world, but like kind of tackling it from the baseball end. Um, obviously, we went out to the Dominican Republic. We're in Santo Domingo. We we, we traveled a bit uh, during the trip. We were out there for, I think, five, six days. Um, we saw one of the only recycling plants they have out in the DR. Um, we did a beach cleanup uh, in Santo Domingo. Um well, first of all, I got to give credit to Chris Dickerson, former MLB player who started mm -hmm. 
who started the organization. It's called Players for the Planet. Um, but yeah, it was just a really great group of people. Uh, one of my best friends, Ryan Burr, who's now with Tampa Bay. He was with the White Sox for a number of years. Uh, he was out there with me, kind of representing the baseball side. But we had uh, a bunch of different kinds of pro athletes out there, um, you know, just trying to use their platform to, you know, be like, wake up world, you know, th this is this is real. Like this, this is, we got one planet to live on. And this is how it looks right now. Like, this is what's happening. You know, it's not just the DR. It's like hundreds of countries. Um, we have so much single-use plastics, uh, water bottles, soda bottles, uh, you know, the stuff you get food in. Like, it, it's everywhere. And uh, a lot of times there is not infrastructure in countries to be able to recycle it properly, to be able to like break it down properly. And um, a lot of times, and we saw this in the DR, there's not that infrastructure for just general trash cleanup. Like living in the States, mm -hmm. we're very used to, you know, the garbage truck or the recycle and the recycle truck come on Tuesday and Thursday. Like you put it in the bin, you put it outside and uh, there you go. It's not like that in a lot of parts of the DR. Uh, there, there's no truck coming. So, you know, families, people generate trash. And next thing you know, it's being thrown out in the forest or it's being left on the side of the road. Well, it's always going to end up washing into, you know, rivers, uh, lakes, and then it will find its way to the ocean and then it'll wash back up on shore. So seeing, you know, I had a somewhat of an understanding of like, how this is going on but like being out there and seeing it in person because the dominican republic is such a gorgeous country and we went out there the morning of the trash cleanup uh we were staying we were staying like literally blocks away from what should be a picturesque beach just amazing you know white sand and all this stuff but we you know, we're we're walking down we're excited and you know, I remember like looking over like the bluff and there's a group of like young Dominican baseball players getting a beach workout in with their trainer. You know, these are 14, 15, 16 year old kids with a dream of, you know, being one day in, in a position that, that I'm fortunate enough to be in. And I'm seeing them do this beach workout with agility drills, cone drills, sprinting, and they're like doing it trying to circumnavigate through just like ankle high trash all over the beach. Yeah. And it really just kind of opened my eyes. I mean, being out there, um, it really kind of changed my mind just on like the little things I do. Like, you know, nowadays, like I'm here, like there's no more like plastic mm -hmm. water bottles. Um, yep. And, you know, that's part of, you know, what I'm going to be trying to do moving forward is just kind of, not to be like too annoying, but like to just let everyone know, like, hey, it might take a little bit extra effort to, you know, get the hydro flask or whatever it may be, rather than just like crushing a Dasani. But if everyone can just do that little bit, then hopefully we can heal our planet in the end. That's pretty much the message. And so, yeah, I mean, I look forward to continuing to work with Chris and players for the planet and, you know, keep heading out to the dr i think it's uh going to be a yearly trip so it was it was really awesome uh first time over there yeah i got to take in a lot of cool baseball stuff too oh I, yeah i saw some of it what was the bet if you were to describe as one like the pinnacle of your baseball experience over there what was it watching a dominican little league game watching like 12 year old kids first of all not to throw shade on uh, little league and travel ball in the U S these kids were so good at, at such a young age. Sure. I mean, we're watching this game and the pitcher on the mound is throwing like backdoor sliders, striking kids out, looking, uh, an outfielder, like line drive in the gap. He had a perfect route, catches it flips and throws like a perfect one hop strike to the, to the catcher on a kid trying to tag up like, it, I couldn't believe the talent at such a young age, but it makes sense because that baseball is life there. 
I mean, I felt I was like in heaven being a being a baseball player, you know, because baseball is my life and I get to be around so many people where it's literally just so ingrained in the culture. It was it was just awesome. Do you, you've always been an open minded guy. Do you have a newfound respect for the guys from other parts of the world that you have played with now because of your trip? I've always I, I feel like I've always respected it. Like I've never been a guy that's like. Oh, don't bat flip, like got to play the game the right way. You know, there's a lot of ways to play the game the right way. And that's just like, at least in the DR, what I saw in the little league game, it was so fun to watch. So, so fun. There was like live, they had like a live play by play and a color commentary, just like blasting through the speakers uh, for, you know, uh, 12 year old kids playing their kids are bat flipping and and there's like sh- a ton of emotion on the field like I don't know obviously there's a language barrier I don't know if this was a playoff game I don't know like what the stakes were right. it seemed just like a normal game to me but like I remember like the kid struck out the last batter looking and did like a whole celebration on the mound and everyone came to to the mound they're like chanting they're uh, dancing um, and like the other teams getting heated. It was like, so it, it was so cool to take in because my experience playing youth baseball was not like that at all. <laughs> so like when I see, you know, players, um, you know, showing their flair on the field, like, yeah, I did gain a little bit of knowledge of like, okay, yeah, this is the culture that's been ingrained in you since you started when you first picked up a bat or a ball. And it's, I think it's great. I think it's awesome. I, I love hearing the way that you're describing it. It just sounds so fantastic. I've heard great things about, you know, all sorts of winter ball and how much guys enjoy it. It just, I'm, I'm happy you did it. And I'm happy that you're going to turn that into a yearly ritual. Anybody know what they're doing on Valentine's Day? Sure, you could go out to dinner, get those nice flowers. But what about the end of the night? What about the end of the night? You're going to be ready to close the deal? It's the sexiest day of the year. So I want to ask you today, are you Roman ready for sex? Because a strong sex life can deepen your feelings of intimacy with your partner, lead to increased happiness as well. And you know what? Roman addresses a variety of sexual health needs for men. So Roman offers genuine medication that helps achieve and maintain a strong erection. Roman also offers discreet wipes that help you last up to four times longer in bed. Treating low testosterone can revive your sex drive. Roman has testosterone testing and treatment as well. And better yet, with Roman, everything is done online. Hesitant to go to the doctor? Yo, Chris, it's your turn. You're going to sit there like this. That's no fun. There's no waiting room. There's no hassle. Roman says everything right to your door with free shipping in discreet packaging as well. And to get ready, and I'm talking about Roman ready, for better sex this Valentine's Day, go to ro.co slash John Boy. You're going to get 20% off your entire first order. Do it, though, by February 8th for guaranteed shipping on time for February 14th, Valentine's Day. That is ro.co slash John Boy. Enjoy your Valentine's Day. I do want to talk to you about your team. It has gone undergone some change since we last spoke. You have a new manager. What's the communication been like? What has he told you? <laughs> um i had a great i had a great phone call with pedro the uh soon after he was hired um you know he asked some of my opinions on things um i asked a little bit about like kind of his vision for the team and and how he wants to lead us and it was all really really good stuff to hear um i feel that for us to to get back to where we need to be based on the talent we have on the field we need to get going in the right direction, you know, all hands on deck, everyone pulling from the same rope. Like there's a thousand cliches I could use, but they all apply. Mm. Um, and he very much, I believe, embodies kind of like what we need for everybody to come together um, and work towards our common goal, which is 
obviously winning the whole thing. Uh, so, you know, I don't want to go too much into detail. Plus, um, I still got to build the relationship with him and, and a lot of the other new faces of the coaching staff. And that's really going to start once we're working together and we're face to face uh, in spring training. And then I really can get that feel for it. Listen, we're not here to throw shade at Tony Lewis or anything else, but we've, and we've talked a little bit about this. There was too much talent there, and I don't care who was injured and who was healthy. A lot of teams go through that sort of shit and still have successful seasons. So at the end of the year, if you had a chance to look back at 2022, were you like, we just weren't good enough and we just didn't care enough? Is that possible? Um, I think everyone cares. But I like, kind of what I was talking about earlier – it's like everyone can care, uh, but there can still be like a disconnect in like coming together to achieve what you're trying to achieve. I, I'm not going to sit here and say there's guys on the team that don't care. Everyone that puts on a major league uniform cares. But um, I think that for us, and I know you said about the injuries, the injuries were really tough. And I think the injuries, they were happening throughout the season to like super key players. And every time it happened, it would like feel like put pressure on the rest of us. Like, well, we got to pick it up. We really got to pick it up. We really got to, you know, pick up the slack because now we're missing this guy and and a kid from AAA has to come up. And, and so, um, it was like kind of feeling that pressure, you know, maybe at times like trying too hard. I'm definitely a um, person that can get in that space sometimes when things aren't going well, become a little over analytical. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a combination of a number of factors where, you know, it just like wasn't, it wasn't clicking. Okay. You're um you're missing your most consistent bat now. Jose Abreu is signed with with one of the enemy, the mm -hmm. World Series champion Houston Astros. When you found out he wasn't returning, what was your immediate reaction and what are you going to miss most about him? Mm. Oh, I was I was pretty sad. I think that that was a sad day for White Sox players, staff, fans. Um you no, know, a lot of us had it just always thought, you know, White Sox, uh, Pito's going to wear a White Sox uniform until he retires. Um, but at the same time, like being a player, I understand, you know, why he, why he uh, made that decision, why he went uh, to Houston. Um, you know, and I obviously can't wait to like see him. We, we play him first series of the year, give him a big hug. Mm. Um, but, yeah, what am I going to miss miss the most from him? His presence. Uh, it was like he he's a leader, not necessarily like vocally, but through man, through his um, through like the way he went about everything he did, like he had such care and attention to his work. Uh, to the point where it's like, dude, are you working too hard? But it was like, it, it, it always worked though. I mean, he's so good. Um, this guy also refused to not play. Yep. Like, all right, Jose, you played 77 games in a row. Like you're going to get a day off. You'd be in the office. Okay. So I DH. No, you're getting a day off. No, 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 no. Nope. Like you do this. No, no, no. I'm going to DH. <laughs> like he, there'd be times where it's like, how, how is he even on the field right now? But he would, and he'd be producing like his love for the game and everything that comes with it. Just like made really made the clubhouse feel whole, feel like a family. Um, and so that's obviously going to be missed a lot. That dude posts, 
and there's no bullshit with him is the way a guy who's never set foot in that clubhouse with him. That's the way I assess it. Yeah. Pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so. he, he he's a special person. You know, I was lucky enough to hear, hear him tell some stories um, that it's not my place to tell the stories, but like tell some stories about uh, obviously growing up in Cuba, uh, you know, the dream to, to come over here, the, the mountain you have to climb to be able to make that happen at the time that he did come over here. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Unreal. Um, one of your former, former teammates, Carlos Radon, of course, he moved down to the Giants and had a spectacular year last year and then signs a nine-figure deal with the New York Yankees. It wasn't all that long ago he was non-tendered by the White Sox, and <laughs> it sounded like, you know better than we do, that he was this close to not playing baseball anymore. Can can you believe he went from that headspace to signing the deal he did? When was he that close to not playing baseball? Well, it sounded like, hey, the guy got non-tendered, and at that point, not really super healthy. Oh, point, after started... well, no, he had a he had an amazing season. He was non tendered. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, he he was non tendered, but then he signed a like a two year with an opt out with the Giants right after for a good amount of money. But I thought he was I thought he was non tendered before the great year he had with the White Sox. He was not non tendered before that year. Didn't he sign for like one year and three million or something? Oh, maybe with the Robbie, White Sox to come back. Robbie, yeah, Robbie can look that up. I don't, I don't know. He was non tender. Uh, oh, you're saying non tendered? Sorry, I was thinking offered the QO. I was thinking completely yeah, yeah, yeah. differently. Um, yeah, I feel like he was always tendered a contract. I don't know though. I don't. Robbie might be able to look it up. I'm not sure. Yeah, they declined his contract uh 2021 going into 2021. Oh. And then he signed he signed back for like for, for less very, than he would have made in arbitration. Yeah, for very little money wow, comparatively I, speaking. I can't believe I didn't know that. Maybe I did know it and I just haven't like thought about it because he's been so good for so long now. Like yeah, yeah. It, the injuries, man. Tommy John, shoulder stuff. I mean, it take that can take a beating, not just physically but mentally, and for your confidence too. But like the guy is an absolute horse, and once he got everything cleaned up medically, we got to bear witness to what a healthy and strong Carlos Rodon can do uh, for us in twenty one, and then uh, does that contract with the Giants after that has the opt out, you know, it's kind of like that type of contract where it's like, if I go out and do my thing, then we can opt out. And sure enough, that's what he did. But yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's one of, in my opinion, one of the best in the league. Um, and the Yankees are very lucky to have him. Is he as intense a, a pitcher as you've been around? Like during the game? I suppose, obviously, you were with Scherzer for a little while. Obviously, when you came Scherzer's up, he's kind of like on a... Scherzer's the most intense I've ever seen. Like even like through <laughs> not just not just during the game. During the game is like a whole other level. But like even before, you know, get it putting the headphones on, getting locked in. Like I'm sure he still does that. Um, but yeah, Carlos is much more chill. Like at all times in life, but when he's pitching, that the, it turns up to like a crazy high level. Yes. Uh, oh yeah. We should get him on. We should get him on with the two of us. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, that'd, that'd be a, be a good one. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, totally. Um. So where are you these days? Have I mean? Obviously, you told us that you had a lot of stuff to work on you know, physically and probably mentally as well after the sort of season you didn't have. As we're now just a couple weeks away from getting this thing going in spring training, how do you feel about everything? I feel great. Oh, yeah. I've been putting in 
I've been putting in some really, really good work. Um, I got my body to like a much better place. I'm a little slimmer than I was last year. Mm -hmm. Um, moving a little bit more athletically, a little more explosively. Um, and we're able to test all these, all these things now living in 2023, we got force plates and we got, uh, little things you can put on your body when you're throwing a baseball and it tells you with numbers and data and the data numbers are looking very good right now. So, Mm. um, obviously it makes me feel a little bit better. And I'm happy with the routine I've developed. I'm happy with the work I'm putting in. Um, you know, there's credit to be given to a lot of people that have been helping me this off season. Um, and yeah, I, I got nothing but good things to say, man. It's been, it's been a lot of fun, uh, really kind of learning from the mistakes of last season and, and getting out of the bad habits from last season Uh, starting to really clean some things up and get moving in the right direction again. Good. Well, we're excited for that. Um, So when they put stuff all over your body and you have to throw, do you have to go shirtless with that or can they do that? uh, Because that wouldn't work for me. I got to be honest. You got to go shirtless. Oh, shit. Not even shorts, man. You're wearing just like the compression shorts. Whoa. Hey, now. Yeah. Hey. We're we're getting to know you really well then in that case. Why? They gotta put stuff near your wanky? Um, like on your legs, I think. Oh man. Your thighs and hamstrings. This is <laughs> this is just not this is getting worse and worse for me. I'm just imagining myself <laughs> like uh this is not going well. I mean, I told Ploof this. Yeah, I started Weight Watchers a few weeks ago. Just I got to a bad spot. When you're my age, it's just you're grabbing for a hand. So it's <laughs> uh, I'm speaking I'm of down Ploof, seven I was supposed to speaking of Ploof, I was supposed to see him like a couple weeks ago or a week ago or something for a little get together, but then he canceled it. Canceled it. You know, it's interesting huh. because I tell him this all the time. I said, when you get all the boys together, you know, you always talk about how close you are with Giolito and Flaherty and Max Freed, you know, he's like, yeah, because he fe- he feels a little bit like your older brother. I don't know if it's yeah, yeah. ever been. Yeah. Okay. All right. Especially I was like, Jack. you know, especially the Jack. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, I said, hey, listen, I'm more than happy to come out. You know, he's like, yeah, yeah, we'll make that happen. It's interesting that you're the one that has to tell me that he was organizing a little fun thing and that it was didn't come from his mouth. Yeah. I'm, maybe I was harsh saying canceled at maybe a reschedule. <laughs> okay well i mean uh time's running out though so we'll see we'll see if we can yeah. get this going yeah well regardless it sounds like i'm not invited like this is the closest i'll get that's that's what it sounds like it just sounds like it's a ball players thing not a well, not a ball uh, player slash whatever you and trevor got going i don't want to be in in the middle of that so don't put that on me <laughs> <laughs> that's not uh I did see uh, something fun with the ball players. Chris Taylor of the Dodgers had it looked like some sort of charitable endeavor at Top Golf. Yeah, um, I did right see. Nelson Gunder. Yes. Okay, so you were there. Freed was there. I imagine Flair. I see Freddie Freeman, and I think I imagine that's a little Charlie there. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, Bit an image. Char- Holy Charlie smoke. was uh, apparently it was his, Charlie's first time swinging a golf club, and he like had it within 10 minutes of course he did <laughs> yeah. i mean what do you expect did you hit any balls or no i did yeah it was my first time swinging a golf club in a long time yeah the... that's a hard sport for guys that are six six by the way yeah I've, I've never been very good actually the my peak was probably when i was like 10 years old um and then i stopped playing because of baseball but then when i got to pro ball i started playing golf again all the time because that's what pitchers do and i was always bad and i even did lessons like a couple off seasons and it didn't help and i was always bad and then it started making my back hurt so i stopped yeah yeah how'd you hit him there uh i was smashing drivers to the back net Mm -hmm. all the irons and chip shots were an absolute disgrace okay I did Freddie Freeman lace it to left center field. Is that where he hit every ball? I think he let Charlie do, do all the swinging. He was just, oh, okay. uh, yeah. Being a good dad so, and hanging out. 
who was the best? It's it had to have been either Freed or Flaherty since they're such good athletes. Those two, Flaherty didn't hit. Max took some swings and and he looked pretty good. Um, Max is like super athletic, so yeah, he kind of picked it up and was just fine, doing a good job. Um, trying to think like who was the best of like everyone I saw. Ah, it's hard to remember. Maybe Gavin Lux. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, he's got a good golfing uh body. Not a big dude, you know, solidly built. Nice I compact could be complete, swing. I could be completely wrong. Like, I don't know. I I wasn't paying too much attention. It, you know, we're there for the charity and um and then oh, I got to do an interview with Fox Eleven, which was pretty cool because Oh, it's like one of my first ever like TV interviews in Los Angeles. I grew up here. I would like watch Fox 11 when I was a kid. Watch the Simpsons. I watch the Simpsons. And so I know Fox 11. That's amazing. Um, um, okay, but, good. I'm yeah. happy. Did, did you feel like you took anything that you've learned from the Rose rotation into your Fox 11 interview? <laughs> Yeah, I take I take it all. I take it all into any media thing I do, for sure. I'm I'm happy that this is uh, your your media training. That's nice. Um, the best when kind do you, of media you training. Must head to, you must Sorry. head to Arizona at some point soon. Early February. Oh yeah. Okay, we're gonna drive the new car out there. We're we gonna meet it. No, I gotta wait. I I'm gonna drive the current car out there. Um, it's my like portable storage unit as my cars have always been uh with this crazy life we live and yeah i'll have it out there until the new one shows up and then trade in and there you go is is your brother casey gonna come out and spend he, he's got to spend some time with you i love that last year oh yeah absolutely he'll be out there um i think my dad's gonna come out um i'm gonna be living with sebi zavala uh, one of our catchers, oh, good nice. friend of mine. Yes. Um, yep. so yeah, we'll, we'll, we're going to have, we're going to have a lot of fun in that house for sure. Very good. Just well, heard I'll that be out there pool for table. Oh, your, your house has a pool. T Are you any good at that? No. Okay. This is maybe I'll get better though. <sighs> it's like two months of playing on that thing. Yeah. So you're the, I think if I were to rank the the professional athletes that I know where I don't know what their second best sport is, I think it's you. I have no idea what your second what is your second best sport. <laughs> no, you've got nothing for me. Um, Not one thing. Esports. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. It Dude. Definitely counts. Uh tennis. I badminton, volleyball, croquet. Anything. No, man, I'm not good at anything. Swimming. Oh. Yeah, I mean I'm a I'm a pretty fast swimmer. I have the right body for yes. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But okay. like I've never like tried to do anything competitive swimming, so it's it didn't pop in my head. But I am a good swimmer. Yeah. All right. Let me ask you one last thing. I want to circle back to the when they're putting all the like dots and stuff on you to get your whatever biomechanic reads mm -hmm. and whatever they're doing, all these numbers. Is it like uh when you're get you've gotten an EKG, I imagine, right? For your you have to do these physical. We do them, we do them every year. Yep. Yeah, that's good. That's good. For me, when I'm about to turn 52, we do them about every 48 hours. Just make sure that they're still <laughs> working. So they stick those things. I'm a hairy dude. I imagine oh. you're. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You and I are both. Right. So do they stick the ones that stick to your hair and then they got to pull them off and you're like, fuck. Yeah. Oh, I try oh. to remember. <laughs> I, I try and fail to remember like before, like either the night before the days leading up to the to the physical like in spring training shave to shave it. Uh, but yeah. I usually forget. And then it's a painful experience. Oh, well, it is like the scene out of the 40 year old virgin where Steve Carell mm -hmm. is having that shit ripped off by the lady that's doing the waxing. But it's hilarious when the uh, assistant comes in to take the EKG and 
for me, it's been a lot of women that have done it. So they're like, okay, take your shirt off. And they start laughing hysterically at the sweater that I'm wearing on my chest. They're mm -hmm. like, oh boy, this is going to be great. And she brings out like this dry razor blade to start shaving off the areas. Did they ever do that to you? No, we, no. Well, oh, our physical strength training, it's like we're on a conveyor belt. It's like boom, 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 like <laughs> yeah. EKG, blood draw, this, that, this, like, there's no time for shaving. No, that's not happening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That happens to me. And so I get home and like, I'll take my shirt off to get in the shower or something. Michelle's like, oh, you must have had an EKG. I've got like <laughs> patches of hair missing all over the place. Yeah. A little freakish. Apologize to our listeners for that story, but I thought you'd want to. You ever try it. Nair? No. Don't do it. <laughs> you have? You have? Oh, yeah. You've done it? Yeah. Yeah, it's like there's like a sweet spot when you're supposed to wipe it off. Otherwise, you're going to like burn your skin and have rashes. It's terrible. Hey, one of our one of our main sponsors, we had it today, Manscaped. We, we promoted the beard one today, but Manscaped, mm. you got to take care of business. That's the way we roll around here at John Boy Media. Manscaped. We can All send right. you one. P please do. Go. Please do. Oh, you're we'll send you maybe have it uh, Giolito embroidered on the uh on the razor too. I don't. I don't need all that. Okay. Well. But yeah. Uh, thanks for taking some time, man. It's good catching up. Let's. Uh, we'll do it a little more frequently than like every two months. And but I wanted to give you a little breather, you know, in your off season. No, I'm always down, man. You know that. Absolutely. I know. I know. So it's good catching up with you. Um, we'll talk to you when you're at spring training at some point in between games of variant. You've called it three different things. Valorant. What is it called? <laughs> <laughs> I called it Valiant Variant. Everything. <laughs> oh my God! I'm such an idiot. This is great. All right, we'll go. Uh, go shoot some people up. Perfect. Sounds good. Sounds Irritably. good to me. For our one of a kind producer, Robbie Shiraco and Lucas Gilito. I am Chris Rose. We'll see you next time on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.